says we are stewards. Say stewards. Steward. According to 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2, God expects that his stewards should be loyal. Say loyal. Loyal. Or faithful. That's a deep word. Luke 16 is another reference and many other references in scripture. Some time back, I gave, I gave you rather a teaching in this place on stewardship. In summary, one way to test faithfulness in stewardship is with money. Say money. money. I give you a scripture which you are familiar with. For where your treasure is, say that your heart will be also. The word heart then means your thinking, your thoughts, your concentrated thoughts. The principal focus of your mind, the reflections and meditations of your mind will be on it. So if you take a million from the bank right now as a loan and invest in business, what will your mind be in the world? And the welfare of that business. How many things do you own? How many things do you own? How many things do I own? Say Lord. L-O-R-D. The Bible calls God as Lord also. Jesus is Lord over your life, my life. All right. The word Lord means the sole owner. Genesis 1 verse 1 makes us understand that God created the entire universe, right? By law, if I create something, do I have the property rights? Hello, do I? If I write a book and I author that book, they call me who? Say author. It means the originator, the one who has the sole right to that particular property. That book, that book, okay? Now, say God's money. I don't want you to be tense. I just want to talk about how to use God's money, God's way to you. Say God's money. God's money. I know you are looking at me right now so seriously. Say God's money. God's money. Say God's money. God's money. Say God's money. God's money. God's money. <laughs> Say God's money, Narissa. God's money. Are you sure? Are you sure? Now, let me give you a scenario. Here is someone who ends, comes to the first of a prayer, goes through teachings, is instructed, they go into the community, implement the principles, flourish. And when they earn 20,000 francs, God comes last. Say God comes last. You know, I'm a very funny person when it comes to implementing certain things, and I can't repent of it. They don't remember tithing. They don't remember any generous offering. Uh, they just go through the motions, the cash flow. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 2. At the beginning of each week, each and every one of you must set aside something to give. That means you will be blessed. Say amen. Amen. This is how to use God's money. Say God's money. Because you and me, we are privileged managers. A manager does not have ownership over the property they are managing. They have access to, not ownership. Say access granted. Access. Not ownership. In the book I wrote on tithing, which over 80% of what is in that book is principles of stewardship, management of those resources. And uh, that's the wisdom behind the title. What is chiefly shared in that book is principles on how to manage those resources. When you prove faithfulness with little, God makes sure that he gives you how much? Say more. Now, what do I do when God gives me his money to manage? Say his money. His money. First thing I have to do according to the scriptures is that you set aside a minimum threshold, the starting point of giving, which is what is called a tithe. It's not a matter of religious law like you don't do it, God will curse you. No, that's not true. The New Testament. There's a demonstration of loyalty to the king. Luke 6, verse 46. You call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I ask you to do. You don't do my words. Okay. So first thing you do with God's money when you earn it, because Jeshua may 8, 18, he is the one giving you the power to get wealth. Who is empowering you to get wealth? Hey, Boris, you'll be a very good doctor in the future. I pray for you for that. So when you earn your salary, the first thing is you designate the type. Then you designate an offering, a free will gesture of your own decision as, uh, let's say, an appreciation to the Lord. Then you come to where you are being nurtured or fed spiritually, wherever that is, and you give so that the work of ministry continuously flourish. Hello. By the grace of God, I'm doing a three, year, three and a half year intensive master's in ministry. One of the things we are taught about management, I remember that lecture was a very good one, is what we call ministerial meets. Pastors really are scared of talking about how to use God's money to God's people, which is wrong, right? 
They just assume people will just understand. No, I have a responsibility to help you understand the ways of God. Otherwise, God will hold me accountable. So, when you receive God's money, the first person that should come first is who? And how you use that God's money is who? How many of us are guilty of not doing that? Beginning of me from time to time. That was in the past. Day. Oh, yes, I have been guilty and I repented of that. So, if you are not doing that, please change. You've seen consistently for the past five Sundays or thereabouts, I come here with a huge envelope. I know many women are looking at this and say, oh yeah, that's because he's a pastor, that's why he's giving more. No, no, that's not true. It's called management, stewardship understanding of the philosophy of management in the kingdom. I own nothing, I have access to God's resources. If I prove to be faithful with it, what will God do? He will give me more. Having said that, please be faithful in your giving. A lady shared a testimony. She sacrificed over 90% of what was already left of her when she's about to travel for a church project and left the following day and had more than double of that same money. Say this thing works. So in summary, as a good steward, a good manager of God's resources, God expects you to think about him, number one, before your own needs and the needs of neighbors and the people you love. Always make sure that his share is kept aside. Amen. Amen. At the beginning of the week, don't give God's share when you are done with spending yours. <laughs> Please, did you hear that? That means if I earn 10,000 francs, if I start putting a project to do my hair, buy this and that and that, obviously that is not going to come back for sure, right? Let me tell you what I do practically and heaven bears me witness. In the meantime, I have a contract that has been running to the second month and more right now. Proud to that I, I work, right? This is what I do. In all honesty, when I step to work, if I'm returning because I'm paid as I work, so if I'm returning home with 35,000 francs, there are some days I can be paid like that, working for about just four hours. Say big boy. Big boy. Say glory to God. Yes. I don't get jealous. You, if you apply the rules, I apply, you get the results. It works. When I'm returning, and I say, Dave, if I earn 35,000 francs, what is tied from 35,000 francs? That's 3,500. That's not enough for me to give to God. I have no problem designating 7,000 francs as overall offering for that one day. Guess what? As the day is coming, God makes sure he attracts more opportunities. That's the truth. So you may see me have an offering at the end of the week when I'm doing a countdown. It's probably 20,000, 15,000 francs. We're wondering, but how did he get it? But if I started going to eat and picking up, number one, it means I replace God's priority place in my life. Say, so I will not repeat this again in Jesus' name. For those of you who have tithes, if there be any, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, it is blessed. 